Hello and welcome to Mostly Vintage Cameras. This is a Canon AE-1 program. Today we're just going to load a roll of film in it. Now the first thing I'm going to do before I even attempt to load a roll of film is to make sure there's no film already in it. I don't want to open the camera back and find there's a film already exposed in there. So I'm going to pull the rewind crank out and that has a little arrow and I'm just gently going to wind it in the direction of the arrow and there's no resistance thus far and it's not springing back. I'm just going to wind it a little bit more. So because there's no tension on this and it's not springing back, I'm confident there's no film in it. So here is my roll of film. This is my test film. And you'll see it has a big number on it. This is 200, 200 ISO. This camera does not have DX coding, so the fact the film says DX coding does not mean that it will automatically set the film speed. So the second thing I'm going to do is look at this dial here. I'm going to push this silver stud and move this lever until the number in this window matches the number on the film. Now a little two pence worth of advice you will find on the internet and on YouTube especially a lot of people saying oh I don't use the dot box speed I make it stop brighter stop darker I don't think this film is really this speed, I think it's another speed. And I'm not saying any of those people are wrong, that's their experience in life. But if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that this is perhaps one of the first rolls of film you've loaded in the camera. And my strong advice to you is that the film manufacturer, with their big factory and their very real laboratories and calibration equipment, probably know more about the film sensitivity than you or I do. So my recommendation is to go with the film speed the film manufacturer recommended. That being said, there will be occasions when you need to influence the exposure for different subjects. So for example, this backdrop is completely white, and if I just went with automatic exposure, it would be not exposed correctly. So for certain subjects, you need to use exposure compensation, but that doesn't mean you have to rate the film for the whole roll at a different speed. So it's turned into a bit of a bit of a rant, but uh, as I say, for the most people, most of the time, using the box speed is the best bet. So moving forward, I'm now going to turn the camera on, and I'm going to take the shutter speed dial away from program. I'm going to take the aperture off automatic. This means that when I press the shutter speed or press the shutter button, I beg your pardon, the shutter will open and close very quickly. This is going to make film loading quicker than if I left it in the automatic mode. So now I'm going to open the camera back, pull this lever up again, put it further up and then a little bit further and the camera back will pop open to reveal the camera interior. Try and uh, do this in such a way that you can see. Now I always prefer to put the film leader in the take-up spool first. Now I'm doing this from behind the video camera so don't have a lot of room to work here. Then pull the film back oops, to the film chamber and drop the crank down. Fire the shutter and wind on. And you just want to make sure that this is engaged and that these sprockets are engaged here. Close the film back, fire once more, and there is a double check we can do. Remember earlier when we made sure the camera didn't have a film in? Well now I'm going to make sure the camera does have a film in. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Take up the tension in this crank, and when it gets a little bit stiff, I'm going to stop and take another film. And if you watch this dial, as we pull the film across the film gate, it's literally unwinding this lever. And that's all there is to it. That's ready to go now. I'm just going to set this back to program. Set this back to A. And if I want to take pictures now, I can just go ahead and take pictures. Or I can turn the camera off. And go out and do whatever it was I was going to photograph. So that's how to load the film. When we get to the end of the film, I'll just take a few more frames on here. Turn the camera on. You may find with these cameras I have this whiny noise when you press the shutter. 
It's not too bad on this one. Oh, that was a bad one. Uh, sometimes called the cannon cough. Uh, it's perfectly normal. Isn't going to cause you any problems. So to rewind the film when we've got to the end of it. So now you see it won't wind on any further. That's the end of the film. There's no point in trying to force this to get one more frame. You'll just tear the film and then you'll be in all manner of problems. So to rewind it, we push this silver stud in on the base plate. Again, lift this lever and we just turn in the direction of the lever. It's worthwhile just making sure this stud doesn't pop out again. It shouldn't, it won't, but it's worthwhile checking. They want to go at a reasonable pace, but not too fast. If you whiz this crank around, well firstly it's quite hard on the mechanism, and secondly you can cause static electricity with the plastic film passing through the camera, and that can cause strange lines on your film. So a reasonable medium pace when you rewind it. This will go loose, as if there were no film in it, which means the film is fully rewound. Now I can pull this lever up, take my film out, and get it developed. And that's all there is to it. That's how you load and rewind a film in a Canon AE1 program. I hope you found this useful or interesting. Thank you so much for watching.